What's up guys, Sleepy Marty here back with another video. When it comes to SSDs, we all want them or we already have them, but how do we tell whether they're dying? Now, unlike traditional hard drives, they don't really have many moving parts. You can't listen for motors starting to die. You can't listen for chattering. SSDs are sort of a little box that just stores our stuff with no real telltale signs that they're actually starting to die. There's again, no moving parts, no clicking noises, no motors, it's just a box and there's really hard way to actually tell them. So today we're going to show you how to tell whether your drive is dying and what exactly you should do if you find out your SSD has started to die. Now again, unlike hard drives, SSDs are even more difficult to diagnose as there's a lot of different factors inside of an SSD and because there's no sound we can obviously listen to, there's also two other factors in your system like CPUs, GPUs and motherboards that could also be causing problems that may not necessarily be your SSD itself. But there are a few things that we can actually go ahead and do and find these signs of these drives actually dying. Now some of them, the signs are actually pretty obvious, like the actual uh, SSD itself pops up a little notification inside a window saying, hey, I'm dying. And there's also two other models of SSDs that will go into a read-only mode when they start to die, so you can pull all your data off without actually losing it. So companies like Samsung and Intel and even some SanDisk models are actually pretty well known for doing this, where they enter a read-only mode and then you can pull all your data off. Not all SSDs from Samsung, Intel or SanDisk will do this, so do keep that in mind. But with that being said, let's jump into some ways you can tell if your drive is dying. And the first thing that I usually like to do is just look for any problems here, and usually you can do so in running some speed tests. So run about four or five actual speed tests to see what your average speed is. If the drive is dying or at least starting to fail, the performance will be very well varied. So you'll have your first run, which might be actually decent at fairly decent speeds, your second one might be significantly lower, your third run may be also too significantly lower, and your fourth run may be even higher, but then your fifth run may be even lower as well. This is a good way of seeing while well, the performance isn't consistent across the board, you're getting some really big differences, and this also too may be a sign that the drive is starting to fail. Now what I mean by big differences is not like say 10 or 20 megs a second differences, I'm talking if your drive is running at 180 megabytes per second, and then the next test you're running it goes down to like 20 or 10, that is definitely a sign that there may be something up. So do a bunch of tests, get an average, and if the average is roughly within 10 to 20 megs of each other, I wouldn't be too worried there. But again, if you're at 180 meg and then go down to 50 or lower, that is something you may want to be worried about. Now do also to keep in mind that the fuller the SSD, the slower it will perform. So if you've got 99% fill on that SSD, it may show signs of dying, but it's not actually dying itself. If you want to find out more about drives and how they fill up and what kind of performance loss you get, check out that video as we went a little bit more in depth into that scenario. But do keep in mind that if your drive is full, it may also to show a few signs of actually dying, even though it might be perfectly fine. The next thing that I do like to do is jump on a uh, checker and check whether there's any bad blocks. Now much like hard drives have bad sectors and just sectors in general, SSDs have blocks. This is where the data is essentially stored, I know it's a lot more complex than that, but just for keeping things simple today, the data on an SSD is usually stored in a block and well if they go bad you can't store a block there. Using a tool like Crystal Disk Info or even something a little bit more harder to pronounce like Disk Sentinel, uh, it can also to be a good place to start. Firing up something like Crystal Disk Info can also to be a great place as a very general overview as Crystal Disk Info can actually even give you a percentage of estimated life left in a drive. There's a lot of SSDs themselves know how much life is actually left in them. So for example, if your drive is down around the 50%, you may want to get off that drive really, really fast. But if you're something like me with 97, 98 or even 99% left in that drive or even 100, you should be perfectly fine for a few years more. But do keep in mind, using a simple checking tool like again Crystal Disk Info is a great way to find bad sectors or bad blocks rather, and also to check the life on a lot of smart enabled SSDs. But the symptoms of bad blocks can also to include things like the PC needing to repair its files on boot up, active programs just crashing or freezing for no apparent reason with no hardware issues, or even just errors when saving, moving or copying files around are great ways to figure out that there may be some bad blocks in that SSD because well you can't actually access those blocks because again they've come bad. So use a checker to see exactly what's going on. Another way to tell whether your drive is starting to die is just general crashes and crashes on boot. 
if you're 100% ruled out every other hardware component in your system and you know for a fact uh, the drive is causing the PC crashes, it may be another reason that your drive is actually dying. Whether again it is bad blocks or something to do with the controller not exactly working properly, a blue screen is also to another way of just seeing, well, the drive may be on its way out. Now one blue screen here and there is definitely something you should not be worried about, however if you're booting up your system and it crashes like 10 times before you can get into Windows and then it blue screens 50 times during the day, you probably want to actually look in that, but a blue screen here and there isn't exactly something to worry about, but general crashes is another sign that your drive may be actually failing. And the final and most obvious way to tell if your drive is failing is if it enters a read-only mode. Now most of the time read-only modes will only allow you to actually plug the drive into another computer and not actually boot from it. So you might get to your computer one day, hit that power button and it just doesn't boot up. The drive itself might not be dead but you just can't actually go ahead and boot off of it because it's in that read-only mode. So what you'll need to do is grab yourself a dock or another desktop PC, plug that drive in and in theory you should be able to access all those files and carefully pull them off and we'll touch on that in just a moment. The read-only mode is found on a lot of SSDs out there and is a great way of saving your data and being able to well get stuff going and show you that your drive is actually going. Now read-only modes don't last forever so if your drive enters a read-only mode please go ahead and try and get your data off as fast as possible. So okay then, we now know that our drive is dying or is about to completely go ahead and die. What on earth should we do? Should we just copy everything off in one large go? Or should we do something else? Well, the first thing you generally want to do is not copy things off in large bulk amounts. Don't use a disk cloner, don't control A and try and copy everything over, that is the last thing you want to do. Because the drive is on its way out, we want to preserve as many writes that it does have left, as a lot of drives have hard coded into them how many reads and writes they can do. Once the software, or once the firmware rather, reaches that read and write limit, the drive will just stop, even if the flash theoretically could work, and even if other controller components theoretically work, the drive will just completely stop there. So the first thing you want to do is just power down that system and then work out what you're going to be doing from there. Don't leave that drying drive on for too long, don't do too many reads and writes on it if you can even write to it keep it everything to a minimum. So the first thing you want to do is just work out what you want to actually try and get off that drive. If that drive is a C drive, don't bother copying Windows installs and that kind of nonsense, copy your most important files off of that drive. The idea is you again trying to minimise those reads and also to minimise that load so the drive has a better chance of surviving the actual copying. If you for example have a 120 gig drive and it starts to go into that read only mode, rather than just copying everything everything over into a new drive and maybe only getting 20 gigs out of it, if you manually copy things over very carefully, get the most important stuff, you might actually be able to copy over a lot more without the drive actually dying. So go ahead and try and get your most important files, whether they'll be pictures, game saves or anything like that that may not be backed up, try to pull them over first as if the drive dies, well at least you copied most of the important stuff over. And a lot of the time if you were going to just copy the entire drive, a lot of these software just start off with the small the files which are usually not as important as some of the larger files. So if you have videos, photos or something similar that is really important to you, the software may actually copy that last because it is a larger and slower file. A lot of times smaller objects are moved over first. And also too, I guess another problem with copying in large amounts is it might all just become corrupted if it stops halfway through. Sure, this is not exactly as common as it used to be, but if you start cloning an entire drive over and it doesn't finish cloning properly, you may actually run into the problem where basically all that data that you did manage to copy is now completely corrupted because the cloning process didn't finish properly. So it is definitely one thing that you want to do is just copy things individually and not load up that drive with large amounts. If the drive does stop working whilst you're copying, leave it for a few hours or maybe even a day and come back as there's a higher chance that that drive may start working again if you give it a time to just sort of sit there. There's no actual sort of science behind it and it's not always guaranteed to work but I've found for a dying drive, I've actually left it for a day or two, come back and the drive has actually well started working again and I've been able to pull those final files across. So 
If your drive is in read-only mode, keep that load to a minimum, keep the reads and writes to a minimum, and if it stops working completely, give it some time to sort of just relax and then give it another shot. It's not guaranteed, but definitely give it a go. But once that drive has stopped working, it's basically gone forever. With SSDs, once they're gone, they are gone, which is really disappointing to see. Unlike hard drives, there's no platters to use a handheld read head from. Basically, all it is in there is some flash and controllers, and unfortunately, at the time of recording, we don't have a way to actually recover them in the same way we do with a hard drive. Sure, there are definitely SSD recovery uh, companies out there, but they're not guaranteed to get everything back when a drive is completely and fully broken. So at this stage, if your drive isn't dying, what should you do just in case that drive starts to die? Well, first and foremost is just do some simple backups, whether you're backing up to another mechanical drive or another SSD even, or off-site like a Backblaze backup, which is a really awesome solution. Find a way to back up your files safely, so if that drive happens to die, well, who cares? You've got a backup that is easy enough to work from. So. Definitely a backup is your first option, but I'd definitely say don't keep that SSD around for too long. After about 5 or 6 years, you probably want to start looking into a new SSD, as SSDs have a specific number again of reads and writes that they can do. Once they hit that limit, boom, they are done. And this limit is hard coded into the firmware that actually runs these SSDs. It's not generally available to the public to even know how many reads and writes these things can do, but it seems to be that five or six year mark is when we start to hit these issues. So if you've got a bit more of an older system, say again, five or six years, you may want to start looking into grabbing a new SSD. Even if it's not showing signs of starting to die, it's better to have two working SSDs than no working SSDs at all. So five years is generally when I personally like to grab a new SSD. It gives me better technology as five years is definitely a long time when it comes to SSDs and storage in general, but overall stops me from losing any data as well. The failing SSD won't have too much of a problem because I've already moved over to my brand new SSD. All in all though, failing SSDs is not exactly the most common thing out there, and most of us will never really hit the max reads and writes that are baked into these SSDs drives. But if you do suspect that your drive is starting to fail, back it up, grab a new drive, and as I did mention before, having two working SSDs is so much better than losing all your data and having no usable SSDs left. And with SSDs, once they're gone, they are gone. There's no real way to recover them like we can on the mechanical hard drive side. They're kind just basically bricks once they are dead. So if you do have a failing drive, check that description box where I've gone ahead and left some links to some software and also to some other SSDs. Otherwise guys, that's about it for this video. Thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.